I kept going. I was high on meth going to church, you know, and I'm like, I would tell God, like, I, you know I want to get off this stuff. You know my daughter deserves a better father, and I want to be what she deserves. So I met, I met Christ. His, you know, he's, he's the light of the world. He became a man, but like his spirit, his light came into me, and I knew he was real. And I, ha I was pretty, I had some intimate encounters like right away. Mm -hmm. And so I was just instantly addicted to that relationship. It was like all in. And so the first year was like amazing. I'm gonna be the best dad I could be. Um, it was focused on Christ and my daughter. That was it. And uh, I wanted to learn this life, you know, get to know how to walk with them. And I was hoping for a, um, a quick healing, you know? Yeah. And then the old issues started coming back up. And, uh, you know, there was, there was a lot of uh, conversations that I had with God about, you know, him taking his time and healing me, you know? And, but then I was you're feel, thinking it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, but OK, then I would come back to my senses and be like, I did this damage to myself. Um, why, why am I mad at you? But then I would meet someone at some church or something. They'd be like, yeah, I was just instantly my anger's gone. Right. When, and I'm like, you're like well, what's see? happening? What the? <laughs> right. right. Like, what's you know? up? <laughs> and I'm, I got holes in my walls. Yeah. You know? And so I went through all that. My daughter grew up and it was fine. I was. She saw some things. I dealt with anger and rage while a Christian, you know, as a Christian. She saw some things that she shouldn't have, and, but we had some great times as well. But she turns, like, you know, early teens. Her mom's still not in her life, really, a little bit, but not much. And so all these issues with her start coming to the surface. And, you know, I lost everything. I lost my house. I lost two cars, two working vans. I went broke. And everything. And so, and I got through it. It was awesome though, because I learned a lot to trust God that if you have plenty or if you're in lack, he'll always take care of you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So it was good. But how I lost it was hard. My daughter even saw it. You know, I got, I got ripped off by some people and they were supposedly Christians. And she's like seeing this. She's like, I don't want to be Christian. Right. <laughs> what are all these people doing to my dad? They're saying, can't be a Christian and have tattoos and people are just judging me. Mm. She's like, I don't want nothing to do with this. And so she starts going through depression too. You, you pick up right where you left off, but I just want to jump in right quick. What, what, what do you say? Because it seems to me like a lot of times people don't want to come to Christ or they don't want to come to church. They don't want to watch a show like this or watch this channel for a lot of these uh, reasons that you're talking about. Uh, that, you know, you go broke if you become a Christian or it's, or it's not, you know, or somebody wants your money or it's somebody else's that's just after you. What do you say to people that, you know, because you've been on both sides of the wall. What do you say that kind of not necessarily kills that argument, but just kind of brings light to what's truly going on here when, in, when you talk about relationship with the Lord? I just feel like, man, people, if you're going to let man chase you away from God, from their mistakes, then... After your life's over, you're going to really regret that because it's like, that's why Jesus says, uh, forgive 99 times. I mean, you're the, seven, you're the preacher. Se seven times so, seven. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's 99 is a sheep, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, he, I'm he still goes, learning. He goes after the one. That's I'm great. I'm still he learning. Great. <laughs> seven times seven or whatever. Seven, seven times seven. Yeah. So that's a lot of forgiveness. Jesus says forgive over and over basically yeah. because people are screwed up. Christians. Oh. Well, give me patience for a lot of Christians out there. Well, too, because you, you know, said because in the movie, I thought I had to get, I had to fix myself first, get off drugs, alpha meth, then go to church. I, I thought I saw that in the movie where you said something like that, and that's why you didn't go to church at first. You thought you had to fix yourself first. Right. Yeah. I but, thought if I walk into church, I blow up like a, <laughs> you know, because God will judge me. You know, right. he'll, he'll like splat me because I'm on meth in his house or whatever. Right. You know, you have all these pre. pre preconceived ideas. And what I think is so interesting, interesting about your story, Brian, is that you, you don't fall one time. It's a, it's a journey. And, and, and you are saying today that God still accepts you with your journey or with your process. Is that, is that what you're saying? I, I feel like he loves failure so much. He loves the biggest messes, man, because that's, that's where he shines, you know? Yeah. He's so good. That's really good. I, I feel like I've known Brian forever. I, just, I know. I feel the same way. Right? So I feel like I've met this guy forever. It's always interesting that God will use real people that went through real situations to bring extraordinary breakthrough, and I believe that's what you represent here. That's the purpose. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make 
the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.